Welcome to the HRC Law Class. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zakwa. Hope you all are enjoying the day and hope you had the opportunity to check out the lesson, Honoring and Understanding Our Heavenly Parents, as that is essential for our building and this law class goes with it. All right. Today, we're going into Commandment 5, Honoring Our Parents. Lord willing, this lesson will have a follow-up lesson that will be a bit more in-depth, touching on the dynamics of parent-child relationships and the shift in the dynamics of the relationships from childhood to adulthood. Now, in regards to family, there are a few website tabs we would suggest and encourage you to check out to supplement the edification in this lesson for sound doctrine. Homework, if you will. It's the building the family tab on the website. And also, when you hit the plus sign next to that tab, there's a drop tab with a few other tabs as well that is essential for understanding our relationships with parents and children. And that's going to help with everything we're learning here. All right. Now, let's jump into today's law class. Honor for our parents. Can you read Sirach chapter 7, verse 27 and 28, please? Honor thy father with thy whole heart, and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. Remember that thou wast begotten of them. Notice, this command is with the whole heart and does not stipulate whether our parents are believers walking in the faith according to the commandments, being doers of the law, or living another lifestyle outside of the faith of Christ. But just for the sake that we come from them, we honor them. We honor our father because they begot us, and our mother because she went through the sorrow of bearing us. And for added measure to think about when considering this, can you continue reading, please? And how canst thou recompense them the things that they have done for thee? There were sacrifices made for us as children that we cannot repay to keep in mind to honor them regardless of where they are in their life. Can you read Leviticus 19 and 3, please? Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am Ahiah, your Elohim. The word for fear is H3372. It means to fear, morally, to revere, reverence. Revere means feel deep respect or admiration for something. Reverence is deep respect for someone or something, regard or treat with deep respect. So having such fear for our parents, whether they're in the faith or not, will help keep the law of our heavenly parents, the Allahayim. Now let's understand honor. Can you read Ephesians 6 and 2, please? Honor thy father and mother. The word for honor is G5091. It means to prize, that is, fix a valuation upon, by implication, to revere. Honor, value. If we value our parents regardless of their beliefs or lifestyle, we are keeping the law of our heavenly parents, and there is a benefit for us. Continue reading, please. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Having honor for Allah Hayyam to value, respect, and revere our parents will prolong our life according to the promise from Allah Hayyam. So regardless of our parents' beliefs and lifestyle, we ought to honor them with a deep respect and value for them as our parents, though there may be instances where we cannot obey them because of our respect for the law of Allah Hayyam under Christ. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21, please? To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to Allah Hayyam, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Whether our parents are without law to Allah Hayyam under the law of faith to Christ, because they aren't obeying His commandments, to overcome and refrain from sin for the sake of the grace? We still have to have that law on Talahayim, ourselves, as you never know 
it may convert our parents and win them over. Can you read 4th Maccabees chapter 2, verse 10, please? For the law conquers even affection toward parents, not surrendering virtue on their account. So we honor our parents, but we do not put our affection for them above the law to transgress against Allah Hayyam. All right. Let's continue in learning about honor for parents. We know honor for parents prolongs our life as promised. Let's continue learning honor for our parents and the benefits of it. Can you read Sarat chapter 30 verse 24, please? Envy and wrath shorten the life, and carefulness bringeth age before the time. Holding grudges or resentment or anxiety for the shortcomings of our parents or the wrongs they may have done against us to be in our feelings about it shorten our life and affect our health. Sirach 3 and 3, please. Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. On the other hand, honoring them with a deep respect and value for them helps atone for our own sins so that our life would be prolonged as the commandment had promised. Continue, please. And he that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. The treasure of our good deeds is stored up with our heavenly parents. Notice all this. It doesn't say anything about whether your parents are in the faith or not. Just the honor that we walk in is going to be benefits for us nonetheless. Can you read Sarat 3 and 5, please? Whoso honors his father shall have joy of his own children. As the promise was that if we obey Allah Hayyam's voice, it would be well with our children in Deuteronomy 4, verse 39 and 40, as you may recall from that lesson on honoring and understanding Allah Hayyam. Thus we see, we would have joy in seeing our children going the right way if we honor our own parents and be obedient to the commands of our heavenly parents. Understand, brothers and sisters, we can't deal unrighteously with our own parents and expect to see things go well with our own children. We have to mend those relationships with our parents, if possible, to have peace, if possible, with them. Can you read Romans 12, verse 17 to 19, please? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If parents did wrong for Allah sake, don't render it back. Continue, please. If it be possible, as much life in you, live peaceably with all men. So if you can, find peace with them with whatever boundaries need to be in place to have peace. But also, remember, we learned from the last lesson on understanding our parents, our heavenly parents, our mind. And though we may not be able to find a peaceable means to live dwell with them or live peaceably with them, we do have to have peace within ourselves for whatever it may be. And I hold any grudge or bitterness about that. Okay. Continue, please. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Again, don't try to do things out of spite, being given into wrath to be in our feelings about the things they've done or things we wish they'd done or what they may not be doing. Keep in mind our focus is to honor them for our atonement and so that Allah may have mercy upon us and prolong our life. Continue in Sirach 3 and 5, please. Also honor of his father shall have joy of his own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. And we honor them also so that we can have joy of our own children. Allah will also hear our prayers because we will be free from sorrow that grieves the spirit and hinders prayers. Whether sorrow over the past or current faults of our parents or even sorrow of our own faults. And being cheerful 
and long-suffering and humility, Allah will hear us as a good parent's ear is open unto their children who honor them and humbly entreat them with their whole heart. Continue in verse 6, please. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. Facts, because that was the first promise to prolong our days. Continue, please. And he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. So be a comfort to her to listen and do what's right in the sight of Allah Hayim, honoring her. Now, Zachary, if you have anything, jump on in. Touching on elderly parents, let's get some admonitions for when our parents get older. Sirach 3 and 12, please. My son, help thy father in his age, and grieve him not as long as he liveth. Don't grieve him in doing evil. Yet, if he is not in the faith, we cannot be respect of persons to fall from the law for his sake. Okay? So understand, there may be something that he may get grieved about because you're having to do what the commandments say. As long as we're doing it in the fruits of the Spirit, that's not a grievance that's righteous in the sight of Allah Hayim, okay? But if he's grieved because of how we're talking to him or how we're treating him because we're not walking in fruits, that's not right, okay? Sirach 4 and 22, please. Accept no person against thy soul. And let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So, there are times where we have to do what's right, despite our parents' desires or preferences for righteousness' sake. Like Zipporah, for example, who circumcised her son, though her father had advised Moses not to. Or Ruth, who refused to leave her mother-in-law, though her mother-in-law requested that she go away. We just have to be sure to do it in meekness, lest we offend Allah Hayim. Okay? Let's continue learning about honoring our elderly parents. Sirach 3 and 13, please. And if his understanding fail, have patience with him, and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten. And instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. So honoring parents, atone for our sins, and helping them with patience helps build us up in righteousness, unlike sinning, which tears us down. Continue, please. In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Thy sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. So honoring our parents atones for sins and helping them when they're old builds us up and makes Allah remember us in the afflictions not to remember our sins but to look upon our good deeds to our parents. Proverbs 23 and 22, please. Hearken unto thy father that begot thee. Listen to our fathers and objectively hear them out in humility and pray about what they say as they may see something that Allah wants us to see or understand whether they're in the faith or not. You have to be mindful of that pride where just because someone in the faith, we think they can't tell us anything or there's nothing they could understand. Okay. Continue, please. Despise not thy mother when she is old. Also, help our mother as she ages as well, like we are to our father. And regardless of who our mother is or her lifestyle, be sure not to let the spirit of hatred lead us to despise her. Remember her sorrows for bearing us, no matter what, as we cannot recompense it, like Allah Hayim said. Continue, please. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. That was Sirach 3 and 10. We know we have to confess the iniquities of our fathers and our iniquities for Allah Hayim to circumcise our hearts when we show repentance for our deeds and what we experience with our parents or learned about our parents. Yet, it's not lawful for us to glory in the shortcomings of our parents as things they fell short in is no glory to us. 
If possible, get to know your parent without being upset about whatever the past may be and understand them so you can be long-suffering to overcome whatever struggles you face in regards to them. Sometimes understanding what they come from can help for perspective to forgive them or just learning them can help find good things to cherish about them rather than dwelling on the things that they fall short in or fell short in. Can you read Hermas, Mandate 5, chapter 1, verse 1, please? Be thou long-suffering and understanding, he saith, and thou shalt have the mastery over all evil deeds and shalt work all righteousness. So learn who they are and find out how y'all can have a peaceful relationship with respect to each other's boundaries. And if not possible, forgive them and just love them from a safe space for your own well-being. It can be some uncomfortable conversations, but we got to speak the truth with love to avoid hatred, wrath, and anger towards our parents or festering in our own hearts. Can you read Testament of Dan to the 5 verse 1, please? Observe therefore, my children, the commandments of the Lord and keep his law. So honor and fear them with a deep respect and value for them. Okay. Depart from wrath. Stay out of feelings about the past or whatever may be at the moment. And hate lying. Catch the lying thoughts in ourselves and don't lie to ourselves or our parents. That the Lord may dwell among you and Belier may flee from you. Speak truth, each one with his neighbor. Keeping the law, staying out of feelings, partaking in no lies or guile or deceit, and speaking truly with loved ones keeps us from the devil and his snares. Continue, please. So shall ye not fall into wrath and confusion. Truth with love and long suffering keeps from the passions that wrath stirs up and the confusion that comes from the other idols that enter into our minds when taken in our feelings or vexations. Continue, but please. Ye, but ye shall be in peace, having the Alahayim of peace, so shall no war prevail over you. No matter what way have happened in the past or may be happening now, leave into Alahayim's ways will bring peace within us. And he will be with us to give us peace, no matter what mental or emotional warfare may be attempting to overcome us. All right. Love the Lord through all your life and one another with a true heart. Things have to be in love, truly from the heart. So each man has the reason in his own heart to love his parents truly to get to the place of being able to speak truly with them in love. Can we jump into Testament of Gad, chapter 6, verse 1, please? And now, my children, I exhort you, love ye each one his brother, and put away hatred from your hearts. Love one another in deed and in word, and in the inclination of the soul. That's why we got to reason, to love with a true heart, because it puts away the spirit of hatred from us towards our parents. And then we can prosper in deeds, word, and inclination of soul towards them, no matter where they are in their life. We don't want to be fake in deceit, acting like it's all good, when we truly have a problem with them, as the spirit of hatred operates in that deceit. Continue, please. For in the presence of my father, I spake peaceably to Joseph. And when I had gone out, the spirit of hatred darkened my mind and stirred up my soul to slay him. Well, using seeing why I was patriot works and putting it in context with relationships. Rather than having hidden frustrations with our parents, we need to be understanding and long suffering, accepting who they are or where they are and truly be at peace with them in our hearts so we can speak peacefully, sincerely in the sight of Allah Hayim. And if there's something we need to talk to them about, we need to reason with ourselves first and be at peace and have that conversation in love. Okay. 
Continue, please. Love ye therefore one another from the heart. And if a man sin against thee, cast forth the poison of hate and speak peaceably to him. And in thy soul hold not guile. And if he confess and repent, forgive him. But if he deny it, do not get into a passion with him. At least catching the poison from thee, he take to swearing, and so thou sin doubly. And though he deny it, and yet have a sense of shame when reproved, give over reproving him. For he who denieth may repent, so as not again to wrong thee. Yea, he may also honor thee, and fear, and be at peace with thee. Just as we spoke about in walking in wisdom in our relationships, walking in love and truth may lead to our parents' repentance unto the faith. And as you see from the admonitions, don't get into passions with them. If there's something you have to talk about and they deny it, don't get into passions, lest your passion cause you to sin doubly and it turns into an argument. Or if they deny it, yet have a sense of shame, Leave it alone and sit and watch and see. Maybe they'll change their ways. And if they choose not to change, what should we do? Continue, please. And if he be shameless and persist in his wrongdoing, even so forgive him from the heart and leave to Allah the avenging. So even if they don't change, forgive them from the heart, not just in word, but truly from the heart and reason to be of that inclination truly, because Allah Hayyam is looking at our heart in all our doings, okay? So no matter what our parents had done or may be doing, we have to be mindful not to judge them, to hold a grudge, because Allah Hayyam will deal with us as we deal. Can you read Matthew 7 and 1 to 2, please? Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. The mercy, compassion, or forgiveness we have for them will be measured unto us. So forgive and have mercy as we want Allah Hayyam to have mercy on us. Lest he see how we feel in our hearts and our dealings and reward us accordingly to our deeds like he did unto that wicked servant that Yacha gave the parable about, that had been forgiven from Allah Hayyam, essentially, but wouldn't forgive his neighbor. Okay. Can you read Matthew eighteen, thirty-two to 35, please? Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I gave thee all that depth because thou desired me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that would do unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So forgive and love with a true heart. Even though you may have to create some boundaries for your mental, emotional, or physical well-being, keeping Allah in mind not to stop having love as our inclination of soul towards all. Gather see at chapter 8, verse 15, please. Talk peaceably each with one another. And love the deed and those created in the image of Ahaya like your own souls. For if you love the creation, it is a sign that you love the creator. And also thou shouldest take hold of the one. Yea, also from the other withdraw not thy hand. Love Ahaya and also man, that it should be well with thee all the days. Amen. That love for our parents, regardless of where they are, where things are. We ought to love them like our own souls as a sign that we love the creator. Okay, so it's for Allah I am sake what we do. Okay. So after understanding our parents and how they may have come to where they are, 
find out what good qualities they have, and keep those in mind to think well of them, as their dishonor is no glory to us. Sirach chapter 3 verse 11, please. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. So though we confess to Allah the shortcomings of our parents, yet in our reverence and respect for our parents, keep in mind or find the good our parents do or have done to honor them in that so as not to glory in their dishonor. Though we have to confess the shortcomings of our parents, the reason we have to confess is so that we don't follow in the way of it. We have to be able to clearly see that it was something that wasn't right according to Allah Hayyam, so that we don't put our parents way above the ways of Allah Hayyam. Not to dishonor them as people, but to understand that what they are doing or what they may have taught us wasn't the right way and for us to see it so that we can come out of it. Thank you. Continue, please. And a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. Likewise, when we learn and confess the shortcomings of our mothers to Allah, it is not a glory to us to relish in it, as her dishonor is a reproach to us. If possible, for peace of mind, find the good a mother has done, and don't glory in her shortcomings. Okay, anything else on that before we go? No, I'm good. Okay. We're talking about separation. Remember, there's a lesson, walking in wisdom in all relationships. Please reference that lesson for some edification on relationships. As we discuss in the wisdom in our relationships lessons, there are instances where we may have to separate from our parents for peace sake or to avoid contention, strife, or stop reproaches that may be coming from them, as it's not possible to have a peaceful relationship respecting each other's boundaries if there isn't respect for one another. Can you read Proverbs 22 and 10, please? Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. So, sometimes this is what's necessary for peace. On the other hand, Separating from our parents in unrighteousness without going through the proper steps discussed and walking in the wisdom in our relationships is not well. Can you read Sirach 3 and 16, please? He that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer, and he that angereth his mother is cursed of Allah. The word forsaketh in Greek is G1459. To leave behind in some place, that is, in a good sense, let remain over, or in a bad sense, to desert, forsake, leave. Okay, forsaken fathers is different from separation for peace sake, or taking some time for things to calm down, and angering mothers unjustly is by transgressing against Allah Hayyam. And to offend her as opposed to her getting offended by you doing what's right in the sight of Allah. Hayyam. Forsaken fathers and angry mothers in unrighteousness is a sign of idolatry and brings the curses upon us from Allah Hayyam as we are transgressing his law to do so. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 16 please? First be he that setteth light by his father or his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. The word cursed is 7034. H, 7034. It means to be light, as implied in rapid motion. But figuratively, only be in contempt, causatively, to hold in contempt. Base, contemn, despise, lightly esteem, Set light, seem vile. So, set in light, our parents, basically means holding them as insignificant. So that means not having respect or value for our parents. To lightly esteem them or hate them in our heart will get us cursed from Allah Hayyam. Unfortunately, many of us have learned to walk in this idolatry of cursing our parents, 
if we are, to be honest with ourselves. Can you read Proverbs 30, 11, and 12, please? There are the generation that curseth their father and doeth not bless their mother. Continue, please. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet it's not washed from their filthiness. Feeling that we're better than our parents, not setting our eyes on what's right to Allah Hayyam, being caught up in our own feelings or perspectives have led us to think we are right in how we feel or deal with our parents. But in the sight of Allah Hayyam, we are not washed from our iniquities because it shows in our dishonor, lack of respect or value for our parents. Sometimes, even the evil spirits drive children to physically abuse their parents, which is against Allah Hayyam's will as well. Can you read Exodus 21, verse 15 and 17, please? He that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Evil spirits also lead to curse our parents, which is against Allah Hayyam's will. Exodus 21 to 17. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Cursing, one of the definitions of this word is reviling. And revile means to criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner. So understand, you know, this transgression is serious. Because getting in arguments with our parents, speaking to them angrily in an insulting manner or in an abusive manner, that's going to get us put to death, according to the law, by Allah Hayyam. So we have to be mindful of our thoughts towards our parents, not to lightly esteem them, or to speak proudly in our hearts about them, or to them with our words. And we have to watch our tone and manner of speech when we do speak to them, lest we offend Allah Hayyam. Okay? This commandment is very important. Leviticus 20 and 9, please. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He that cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. Put it in layman's terms. He that criticizes in an abusive or speaks in an angrily insulting manner shall surely be put to death when it comes to that time of judgment to give answer for what we've done in our lives before Christ, right? For better understanding of the Hebrew word for curse, this is out of the corners. It says, the term signifies not only to curse, but to speak contemptuously, disrespectfully, or to make light of a person, so that all speeches which have a tendency to lessen our parents in the eyes of others or to render their judgment, piety, etc., suspected or contemptible, is here included. Through the act of cursing or of treating the parent with injurious or opprobrious, which means abusive language, is what is particularly intended. He who conscientiously keeps the fifth commandment can be in no danger of the judgment here denounced so we truly have to be mindful of how we talk to our parents how we think about our parents all right christ wants us to uphold this law of honor not to curse our parents can you read matthew 15 and 4 please but Allah commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. This was Allah Hayyam's commandment. Okay. G2551. The word curse, it means to revile. Curse, speak evil of. So we can confirm the understanding that we we're getting from the scriptures before in the language. Don't revile or speak evil of our parents. Okay? That's important. Don't try to vilify them, okay? Can you read Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20, please? Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out 
in obscure darkness. Okay. Proverbs 30 and 17. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. That's straightforward. We are under grace. So no man is stoning us to death for these sins during this grace period. Can you read John chapter 8, verse 5 and 7, please? But it shows you that creation is used to <laughs> based on the things that you do do against the law. Yeah. So when those anomalies happen to you, it's not by chance. John chapter 8, verse 5. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? John chapter 8, verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Okay. So like in the law, somebody cursing their mother or father is worthy of death. But he that is without sin casts the first stone. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of Allah. So nobody can stone anybody. All right. Continue. Let's see. Just because we can't put somebody to death, let's see if that justifies what the person is doing. Can you read John 8 and 10 and 11, please? When Yahji had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Yahshua said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So, no one in the faith will put a person to death for transgressing these laws, as we are under grace. But if a person continues in this iniquity and doesn't change to come to repentance, to go and sin no more, as Christ said, they will fall into the hands of Allah Hayim, who will judge according to his law in the end. All right. Can you read Hebrews 10, verse 28 to 31, please? He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the son of Allah Hayim? and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people, for it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. Amen. And we have confirmation that there is punishments for these things. In the Apocalypse of Peter chapter 11, it says, Furthermore, the angel Israel shall bring children and maidens to show them those that are tormented, and they shall be chastised with pains, with hanging up, and with a multitude of wounds, which flesh-devouring birds shall inflict upon them. It said that piece that said the birds are going to eat their eyes and stuff. It says it's going to be birds that um inflict upon them. These are they that boast themselves, trust in their sins, and obey not their parents, and follow not the instruction of their fathers, and honor not them that are more aged than they. So, truly, these things have repercussions, okay? So, we may come to find that we have done these things, and our best interest is to repent and sin no more, though we are not being put to death by believers for our dishonor of our parents, because if we persist, the judgment from Allah will fall upon us in our end. There are some things the world teaches us to do as well that causes us to sin against Allah Hayyam, like taking from our parents in a sense of entitlement because we're their children. 
Can you read Proverbs 28, 24, please? Whoso robbeth his father or his mother, and saith, It is no transgression. The same is the companion of a destroyer. A friend of the devil, the destroyer, takes from his parents without their consent and doesn't think there's anything wrong with it. If we fall into this category, steal no more and provide all things honestly, working with our own hands to provide for ourselves and to give to those in need. And if we have need of our parents, let us ask them, giving them honor and respecting their belongings. Can you read Ephesians 4 and 28, please? Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. And when we have extra to give, help our parents. It's according to the law to do so, and not to take it to give it unto others for our own gain. We want to make sure we have the right mindset not to dishonor our parents by not helping them when we have the ability to do so for some other gain or profit for ourselves. Can we read Matthew 15 and 5, please? Yeah, and not borrowing from your parents without asking. Right, because that's not borrowing. <laughs> right, we're going to throw that in there just right. in case. <laughs> that that is taken. That is that right? right. <laughs> okay. uh, Matthew 15 and 5. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. The man, he has something for his parents, whether it be some money or some stuff that could benefit them. That would be a profit to them as he should honor his parents and help with what he can. Just like Jacob, he would send four times a year to his mother and father, giving them some of whatever he had extra, okay? This man, instead of doing that to be a prophet and help to his parents, he's taken all of that to give and use for something else, to give as a gift elsewhere to the Pharisees in this particular thing for his own sake of being held in honor with them he's telling his parents it's a gift whatever i had for you to profit you i'm taking from you and using it as a gift for somebody else okay and this was viewed to Allah Hayim, as we're going to read in mark 7 verse 12 and 13 and you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother making the word of Elohim of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. So they were teaching people not to actually help their parents by taking whatever you got to give to them, okay? Instead of to your parents to help them, okay? The Pharisees taught people to give their money unto them as a gift instead of helping their parents with any extra they had to give making the word of Allah to honor your parents of none effect so that they could be worse than infidels by not providing for their own family. Can you read 1 Timothy 5 and 8, please? But if any provide not for its own, and specifically for those of its own house, he hath denied the faith, and it's worse than an infidel. Now, let's all get this in context we can't help our parents to do things they shouldn't be doing but we have to honor our parents and help them with what we can while making sure our wives and children are taken care of first lest we fall into poverty ourselves can you read Sirach 29 and 20 please help thy neighbor according to thy power and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same and in helping parents, make sure you and your wife are in agreement in what you're doing, okay? Because a husband and wife and agree together is beautiful to the Holy Spirit. And do well and communicate as we're admonished. 
with all this, let's walk in the fear of the Lord. Sirach 3 and 7, please. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father, and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. So for the fear of the Lord, we serve our parents in things that are lawful for us to do as our master, whether they are in the Lord or not, so long as the service doesn't prevent us from abiding in the fear of the Lord to keep his law first. All right. Continue verse eight, please. Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. As we talked about in true dealings, in taking Elohim's name in vain lesson, let's be mindful to speak and do truth with our parents and be dependable to speak with deep respect in our words and fulfill our words so as not to be found liars, not doing what we say we will do. Be sure to take time to speak honestly about what we can and can't do with our parents so as not to be found lacking in the sight of Elohim. Can you read Sirach 4 and 29, please? Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deeds slack and remiss. If we are honorable in word and deed to do service as unto our masters, it will help build up our own family as well. Sirach 3 and 9. Can I, can I touch on that Sirach 4 and 29 real quick? Please. To bring it to, I want to bring that one to life real quick. Um, okay. It says, be not hasty in thy tongue, right? So you don't want to be saying, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. You'll be very quick to, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. But then you won't actually do it. Or you'll be very slow to do it. It said, in thy deeds, slack and remiss. So you may take your time to go and do it. Or you may not do it at all. So that's what that verse is actually talking about. Thank you. That's essential. Right. Quick to listen, slow to speak. So be sure we do what we say. Can you continue in Sirach 3 and 9, please? For the blessing of the Father establishes the houses of children. Amen. As he has been given honor over the children by Allah, his blessing over our family matters. Continue, please. But the curse of the mother root without foundations. If one curses their mother, how can they have honor for the Holy Spirit? The foundations of their house is rooted out. And how can you build a house with no foundation? As we see, the mother's blessing matters too. So let's do right by our parents to receive a blessing from them. All right. Let's see an example of how the blessings from a father and mother can be. Can we read Tobit chapter 10, verse 12, please? And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents, that I may hear a good report of thee. We get to see here that when we get married, our in-laws are our parents too. We have to honor them as parents, as we discuss in this lesson. Yet, Priority for parents-wise, honoring our parents that begot us comes first. Okay? Can you read Proverbs 23 and 22, please? Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not the mother when she is old. If there is a differentiation of opinion between our parents and in-laws, pray and examine by the law to ensure that advice or request is lawful. And if both are lawful, then... Hearkening unto the Father that begot us has precedence, and pray to Allah about what to do. Surat 37 and 15 and 16, please. And above all this, pray to the Most High that he would direct thy way in truth. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. All right, so... During and and then pray to Allah and make sure to get an answer to know the right way to go. Let's continue seeing how a blessing can be from parents. So after Raguel blesses daughter, 
And he kissed her. Can you continue reading so we can see what the mother said? Please. Tobit chapter 10, verse 12. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see thy children of my daughter Sarah before I die, that I may rejoice before the Lord. A mother's blessing to see her son be prospered and blessed with children. For an example of the blessings of a mother. And also, we also get to see the respect given to an adult son now becoming like a brother to the mother. Okay. That's that dynamic shift. Okay. And we're going to get into that in a lesson to come. Yache himself, we can get an example of that dynamic shift from Yache's relationship when he became a man with his mother after the flesh Mary. You remember he was subject to his parents in Luke 12. Let's see when he was a man, how that dynamic changed in John 19 and 26, please. When Yache therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, th that disciple took her unto his own home. When a father dies, the grown son has authority over his mother as a brother, while still honoring her as his mother. We'll get further into this dynamic change in the lesson following Allah I am willing. Let's finish seeing what blessing Edna gave to Tobias, her son-in-law, in Tobit 10 and 12, please. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. Also, she entreats him to dwell with his wife according to knowledge in the law of Allah and fruits of the Spirit. So, hope this edification helps for understanding the honor for our parents. In another lesson, we will get into the dynamics of parent-child relationships and the shift in that dynamic as children become adults for further edification on this topic. Anything else, Brother Zachwa? No, all good, Brother. All right. Praise Allah and peace be with you all. Chala. Chala. HRC, 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 HRC,